This is the complete internet marketing for beginners course. As an internet marketer, you will be able to earn money from the comforts of your own home with no limits as to how far you can scale and grow your business. It is highly rewarding and it's a skill that you can use to land jobs or to market to other companies too. There's just one problem, it is very complicated. If you are not familiar with the world of internet marketing, then you might be even wondering how it's even possible to earn money online without anything physical. It is very daunting and it's certainly not clear how and where to start. With this video course, you will learn the basics of SEO, site design, affiliate marketing, email marketing, social media, and more. Enroll now and let us get started. Thank you. The power of the web. The internet can help you to live your dreams and to design the perfect lifestyle that will make you truly happy. Whether you have a small business that you want to turn into a big business or whether you want to make money writing a blog on a topic you love, internet marketing can do that for you. As an internet marketer, you can make a truly passive income. That means earning a living by writing an amazing website once or creating a product once and then letting the income roll in forevermore. You can even do this as an affiliate marketer by selling someone else's product. As an internet marketer, you can earn a little money on the side writing articles for other people. The only problem, most people have no idea where to begin with this. When I tell a lot of people that I make money online, the response is often to look at me perplexed. What do you sell? Well, nothing. Where does the money come from? I actually had to promise my grandma that what I was doing wasn't in any way illegal because she found it so hard to understand that I can make money without leaving the house. My sister recently decided she no longer wanted to do her current job and said that she'd like to start online like me. She asked me how she could get started, what she needed to learn, and what a good resource would be for her to begin. And I was just kind of lost for words. Truth be told, there isn't a really great resource out there for people just getting started. Truth be told, there is a huge amount of misunderstanding regarding what internet marketing is, what it's capable of, and how you should get started with it. This is why you see so many businesses get it entirely wrong. Have you ever visited a business site only to see that it looks completely unprofessional and cluttered? Have you ever visited a brand's social media page to see that it hasn't been updated in months? Or that what is there is just uninspired and unlikely to convince anyone to buy from them? A lot of small businesses will recognize the power of the web to bring them money and customers, but they won't have any clue how to begin. Thus, they will often end up just hiring the first SEO, search engine optimization company they can find, and hoping blindly that the company will maintain its side of the bargain and actually help them get to the top of Google. Sometimes that happens. Other times, a company uses outdated, spammy techniques and the business goes bust. Either that, or the company does nothing much and the small business just wastes a lot of money. But how is a company to know whether their SEO agency is doing a good job when they don't really understand how SEO works? This training. This training, then, is ad resource. This is a training that can take you from zero knowledge regarding the economy of the web, SEO, internet marketing, all that stuff, and bring you up to speed. You'll learn the technical skills to build a brand, promote it online, and create a marketing campaign. You'll also learn additional skills that can take you to the next level. Skills like design, website development, and videography. And you'll learn how to leverage all those skills, how to harness them, and how to use that to accomplish all kinds of amazing things. Yes, small business owners will gain the skills they need to be able to build their businesses online. But likewise, you can also take these skills and go freelance. You'll be able to make money on the side, or as a full-time career, by selling your newfound internet marketing skills. Or if you prefer, you can take those skills to create your own blog or YouTube channel. Then you can promote a cause that matters to you. You can become internet famous as a comedian or musician. Or you can make a living writing about something that fascinates you. Either way, you'll learn the raw skills and you'll be able to devise a marketing strategy that takes all of them into account with perfect synergy. The web can do incredible things for you. You just need to know how to work it. So let's figure that out together, shall we? The economy of the web. So, assuming you're a complete greenhorn at this point, you might be wondering how precisely money gets generated online. Where does it all come from? Why is it profitable to run a website that is free for anyone to read? The answer is advertising. If you create a website and place adverts on it, then you will get paid by the advertisers, depending on how many people see your website on a given day. 
the simplest way to explain this as someone unfamiliar with internet marketing is to say that it is the precise same business model as the one used by free magazines handed out at your local subway stop. These magazines don't cost anything to read, but because so many eyes are on them, the publishers can charge advertisers large amounts to show their ads. You can do precisely the same thing by having a website with a large amount of traffic. There are several different ways in which advertising can make you money as a web publisher. PPC. This is pay-per-click, and popular examples include the likes of Google AdSense. You can also get CPM, which means cost per impression. PPC pays out when someone clicks on one of your ads, and CPM pays out each time an advert loads on your site. You sign up to the ad network, get given some code, place it on your site, and start earning. Banner ads. Banner ads are much more straightforward. These are agreed with the advertiser on a per month basis, and you'll simply get paid a fee by that advertiser each month that the ads are displayed. Affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is a big aspect of internet marketing, and it's actually one of the principal ways that money gets made online. Here, you get paid commission if someone buys a product that you recommend. So let's say you're a big blogger who writes about fitness. You might then recommend a certain protein shake, and each time someone buys that shake using the link you're provided with, which is how they know you sent them, you will earn 30% of that sale. The more persuasive you are, the more visitors you have on your site, the more you can earn. There are various other variations on this theme. In white label dropshipping, for instance, you sell a product that your brand is your own, but each time a sale is made, a manufacturer will do the work and send out the item while taking a cut of the money. Sponsorship. These days, sponsorship is more and more of a big deal on the web. If you can build a website with thousands of viewers or a YouTube channel with a million subscribers, then that will make you a thought leader. Now, brands will want to associate themselves with your brand, and so they might pay for you to give them a shout-out or even just to wear their clothing. This is how your general blog will make money online. But of course, there are many different types of businesses that run and thrive online. That's because these days, you can sell pretty much anything online. Often then, your business will simply sell a product or service. If you are a law firm, then you make money through your website every time someone calls up and secures your services. If you have an e-commerce shop selling CDs, then you make money each time someone buys a CD. And these days, more and more creators also sell digital products. So a digital product is simply a product that isn't physical. So this isn't a car or an ornament, but rather it is an ebook or an online course. The advantage here is that anyone can make a digital product. Often it is just a PDF, which we're really selling in this case is the knowledge. Likewise, a company can sell digital services, which means they'll be selling article writing, web design, search engine optimization. In other words, they'll be selling things that the other sites can use in order to be more successful selling their products. Whatever the business model of the website, social media channel, or YouTube channel, the constant truth is that more traffic equals more money. The more people view your site, the more advertisers will want to work with you. The more you'll be able to sell products for commission, and the more you'll be able to sell your own products or services. That said, there's one thing that is actually more important than traffic, and that is engagement. In other words, do the people who come to your site go there because you have advertising everywhere? Or do they go there because they love your brand and they're curious to know what you're going to write about next? It's the true fans that are likely to buy your products and to follow your recommendations. They are the ones you want on your site. The balance of power. In each of these different business models, the balance of power is slightly different. Your aim is to ensure that the balance is in your favor as often as possible. So, for example, if you are making money from PPC, where do you think you are in the ladder? You're right at the bottom. Somewhere at the end of this long chain, someone is making a purchase. AdSense means that an advertiser is paying Google for each visitor, and Google is then giving you a percentage of that money. So not only do you have Google as a middleman, but you are also losing a customer, normally for only a few cents. That customer is then heading over to another website, where they are making the other company more money. You know that on average, each customer is worth more to the advertiser than they are to you. Otherwise, the advertiser wouldn't have the money to pay for your adverts. It wouldn't be profitable. So, 
You should think long and hard before covering your website and ads and calling it a day. If you go direct to an advertiser and get paid per month for a display ad, then you'll be a little higher up the ladder because you'll be making money directly from the advertiser without anyone taking a cut in between. Better yet is to be an affiliate marketer. Affiliate marketers often make very large cuts of the overall profit, and in the case of digital products, this can sometimes be as much as 70% or even 90%. The product owners don't mind giving away so much profit because they wouldn't have made the money themselves anyway. This is in addition to what they're already making from their own sales, and the more commission they give away, the more sellers they attract to help them sell units. But you're still giving away some of the profit, and you're still not in control of the brand. Moreover, you are still sending someone away from your website in order to make that cash. And this is why it's better yet to have your own product whenever possible. And if you're a business that sells an actual physical product or useful service, then you will still be in the strongest position possible. Then again, there's nothing to stop you from having multiple different revenue streams on a single website. You can run a blog that makes money from AdSense, also has a paid banner at the top of the page, also recommends affiliate products in the body of the blog posts, and also sells an ebook. And why not offer a consulting program on top of that? Either way, this is what makes the web go around. Well, that, Google, and content. An introduction to SEO. So now you know how money is made online, and how you can get rich from a website that doesn't sell anything. More to the point, you know why you need traffic and eyes on your brand in order to be able to generate that money. And how do you get eyes on your brand? The number one option for most sites and businesses is to use Google. Google is by far the largest site engine, and most of us use Google to look up anything we want to know or use. Want to buy a hat? Then you'll probably search Buy Hats Online. Want to find out the best exercises for getting great abs? Then you'll probably search for best ways to get great abs. Search engine optimization is all about making sure that your site is the one that comes up first or near the top when someone performs a relevant search like this. That way, people who are looking for your products or your content will find your site. This is still probably the most effective way to bring new visitors to your site and to increase your brand's visibility. But how do you get to that point? A brief history of SEO. To get your site to the top of Google, you need to get inside the mind of Google. That means cracking Google's algorithm and understanding how it indexes and ranks websites. There was a time that this was all very simple. Essentially, Google maintains a huge database of websites and keeps information regarding their subject matter, their quality, etc. When you search Google, it consults this database in order to present you with the most relevant responses. Google builds this database using spiders or bots. These are programs that trawl the web in order to scrape content and add it to the index. To find new pages, these bots will follow links on pages that are already in the index. Google decides which content is a good match or not, at least partly by looking for exact phrase matches. So, if you search for the term buy hats online and there's a website in its database that uses this phrase several times, it will consider it a match. It also considers quality, and one of the biggest indicators of this quality is the inward bound link. The reasoning behind this is that if a website has linked to your website, then it must approve of your website. This looks like a testimony of sorts, and so the more links that point to your site, the more important and high quality it is thought to be. And back when Google first launched, this was pretty much the only thing you needed to know about SEO. To get to the top of Google, you just need lots of content that would use the same keywords over and over again. And you needed to get lots and lots of links pointing to your site, ideally from relevant sources. So, if you wanted to build a website about making money online, you would start by researching keywords. That would mean using Google's keyword tool in order to see which queries related to your topic were the most popular among users. In other words, which phrases get searched for the most. Let's say you then pick Make Money Online. From there, you then start adding new articles to your website, each containing the phrase Make Money Online a few times per paragraph. And on top of that, you then write content to submit to other websites, perhaps some content farms like eZine articles back in the day. Content farms are sites that let anyone add new content to their pages. This means that you could write 100 articles a month on how to make money online and ensure that each one included a link back to your website using the anchor text Make Money Online. 
And with time, these practices would be enough to ensure that you got to the top of Google. But that was then. SEO is much more complex, and in many ways, it has evolved to the point of being something completely different. So, let's examine what it involves now, shall we? A penguin, a panda, a pigeon, and a pirate walk into a bar. Google was once simple, and the web was like the Wild West. Whoever drew fastest would ultimately emerge victorious. But there was an obvious problem with this, because it meant that anyone could get to the top of Google without there being any real necessity to create a high-quality website. You could write the lowest quality content in misspelled the broken English, and you could cover it in spammy ads. But as long as you had lots of keywords and lots of links, you'd still come out on top in the results. That meant that people who used Google would end up getting burned because they'd click on low-quality results. And if that carried on, Google would risk losing customers. If every time you searched Google, you found websites that were trying to steal your credit card information, you would probably eventually stop trusting Google. It got so bad that people even started using article spinners. These were tools designed to copy other people's content, replace all the words with synonyms, and then publish it. The result was an unreadable jumbled mess, but it was enough to crack the system. Remember, Google is just like any other website owner. Their customer is the advertiser, and therefore the visitor. They have no loyalty to the website owners, and they are under no obligation to ensure that you keep getting traffic. So, Google evolved. Google changed its algorithms to become more sensitive and smarter. Now, if Google detects attempts to game the system, it can penalize content that was designed to trick Google, and that wasn't offering any quality in return, and it could ensure that only the best quality got to the top. Google's algorithms rolled out, each with a different name, and each of which would shake up the market in a huge way. For example, all Google's updates and what they mean for a good SEO strategy. Panda. Panda was the first big algorithm update to launch, and this was designed to penalize all those sites that had plagiarized their content, that had used spam, or that had used keyword stuffing. Keyword stuffing is when you try to get Google to rank your site for a certain keyword and you go way overboard in inserting the keyword into your text to the point where it becomes unreadable. Welcome to this Buy Hats Online website. Looking to buy hats online? Buy Hats Online here. It sounds funny, but people were really doing this. All those sites that were guilty of so brazenly manipulating Google's algorithms were punished, sent right down to the bottom of the SERPs, search engine results pages. This actually destroyed some businesses, and many people were very angry at Google as a result. But in Google's defense, it had always told site owners to write for the user and not to write for Google. Penguin. Penguin targeted spammy techniques focused around links. All those sites that had created hundreds of thousands of links on low-quality sites were penalized. Fortunately, Google also presented a links disavow tool that site owners could use to disassociate themselves with low-quality links. Google emphasized the importance of quality links over quantities of links. In other words, if you get a link from the BBC, then it will be worth infinitely more than 1,000 links from eZine articles. Simply because anyone can get links from eZine articles, and a link from the BBC is a genuinely impressive testimony. The best way to think of this now is as a game of degrees of separation. Certain sites have much more clout than others. A site with an EDU domain or a GOV will have a lot of authority and trust to begin with. Likewise, sites that come up in Google's news section also must carry a lot of influence. If you can get a link from one of those sites, then this could change your fortunes overnight. But failing that, you can try getting a link from a site that has a link from one of those sites. Failing that, get a link from a site that has a link from a site that has a link from a site that has lots of authority and trust. In other words, Get as close to the most influential brands in your niche as possible to reap the major rewards. Pirate. Pirate focused on stolen content and copyright breaches. <laughs> About time, too. In 2017, another update called Fred reinforced this by penalizing sites that were violating Google's webmaster guidelines. Affected sites were typically low-quality sites designed purely to bring in ad revenue. Pigeon. Pigeon is all about local search, and it basically makes the location that the search is being carried out in even more important. That's why one of the best strategies for a new SEO campaign today is to start local. Start by targeting Buy Hats Online Santa Monica, and only then branch out into other areas and more global searches. Another update in 2016 called Possum 
Double down on this with queries performed closer to a business being more likely to bring that business up as a result. Mobile. The mobile friendliness update was designed to make webmasters create sites that would be optimized for mobile. This meant they should load quickly, use a responsive design that would change shape depending on the size of the screen, use touch-friendly navigation elements. Speed optimizations became especially important, in fact. And this is something that Google is really pushing for right at the moment. It wants to ensure that users have the best possible experience from start to finish. So, if your site is filled with unnecessary plugins that just slow things down, then you should remove them. Google actually offers a site speed test and a mobile friendliness test, both of which can be run very easily through the browser. Test both these on your site to ensure that your page meets the new requirements, and you can avoid being penalized for not catering to what is now a significantly large portion of the overall audience. AMP. Another thing to look into if you really want to get into Google's good books is AMP. This stands for Accelerated Mobile Pages and is a new initiative from Google that is designed to encourage creators to create a second, highly mobilized, super quick version of their site. This is possible to achieve through a single plugin if you use WordPress and once that is in place, your site will be able to appear at the top of the other search results with an image from your site and an AMP logo to encourage more users to click it. Rank Brain. Rank Brain was introduced in 2015 to help Google better match the intent of a query rather than looking for precise keyword matches. It is not so much an algorithm change as it is a specific tool that Google uses and that relies on machine learning in order to properly understand the content of websites and the precise meaning of search terms. Between this and Panda, keywords became far less straightforward. They're still important, yes, but now so too was using synonyms for those keywords natural language surrounding the keyword and using the exact key phrases subtly. Today, the most common advice is to use keywords with a density of around 1 to 2 percent. That means one or two keywords for every 1 to 200 words. I personally recommend going even less. Meanwhile, the use of synonyms and related language is what's known as latent semantic indexing. It's also important to think about the placement of your keywords. A keyword used in the first few sentences, in the header, in the footer, etc., all carry more weight than a typical keyword used anywhere else in the copy. Rank Brain is constantly evolving, using huge amounts of data to better understand what users respond well to. And that doesn't just mean keyword use. It also means that you need to offer deeper, more meaningful content. The recommendation among many creators is to aim for content that is anything from 800 to 2,000 words long. This should include links out to other useful sites to act as references. I highly recommend linking out to research and studies if you are writing a scientific piece. And it should include images and charts and bullet points. RankBrain also brings even tighter focus onto UX, user experience. Using its machine learning chops, RankBrain can look around your site as though it were a real person. And it can decide what makes for a good experience and what makes for a bad one. So even if you have great content, Rank Brain will penalize you if your site is poorly laid out, or if that content doesn't use a nice readable font with big headers. The new SEO and everything you need to know to succeed. With all these changes, the face of Google was completely rewritten and altered. The latest version of Google's algorithm is called Hummingbird, but this in fact incorporates all of the above algorithm updates, machine learning tools, and more to form a cohesive whole. Moreover, Hummingbird is different from previous Google algorithm updates because it has the ability to grow, adapt, and evolve on the fly. Now that means that Google can update its index from day to day and change the way it looks at our sites. And that means that anytime we crack the code, it can change again. It means we can't settle into a rhythm thinking that we've figured out how to do SEO because it will change again. So instead, all we can do is to understand what it is that Google wants and to ensure that our goals are aligned with Google's. And what does Google want? As I said earlier in this training, it wants to serve the user. It wants people to find the content that they are looking for. It wants that content to be high quality. And it wants them to have a good experience with it. Because that way, they will have a good experience with Google. And that way, they'll be much more likely to come back for more in the future. So your aim, difficult though it might be, is to try and forget about Google on the whole. You should keep keywords in the back of your mind. Every now and then, try to target a topic that is being searched for but isn't highly competitive. Occasionally, give your headings catchy names. But do not write your content with the main aim of impressing Google. 
Aim to deliver the best possible experience for your audience. Associate with only the highest quality brands that have a similar ethos and message. Write content that is comprehensive, original, and interesting. Build links on high-quality sites and not in droves. In fact, this is the most important tip for good SEO. Engage in guest posting. Write a post for a high-quality site and offer to swap that for a link back to your page. Use influencer marketing. Collaborate with other creators in your niche. And research the backlinks of your favorite sites so that you can see how they got to where they are. Try to make your content natural. And try to make your links natural. Write content so good that people want to look to it. Optimize, speed up, and improve your website at every opportunity. As long as your site is genuinely good, if it is the best at doing what it does, then your goals are aligned with Google. And that means that every future algorithm update should be more likely to benefit your brand rather than penalize it. It should help you rank higher, not lower. Google's vision of the future. The other thing to think about is Google's vision for the future. This way, we can preempt the nature of any future updates and ensure our sites will hold strong. So what does Google's future look like? Well, we know that Google now considers itself to be an AI-first company. We can see this when we look at the kinds of products and services it is prioritizing. Google Search on Mobile has evolved to become Google Assistant. Google now wants you to be able to talk naturally to your voice assistant and for it to answer you with relevant information it has pulled from the web. This explains the importance of RankBrain. People don't search Google Assistant by saying, buy hats online. They search Google Assistant by saying, hey Google, where can I buy some hats? This means that Google now needs to understand not only the words you say to it, but also the meaning behind those words. So, avoid the temptation of focus on distinct keywords and move more towards answering questions, providing services, and filling niches that you see in the market. Remember, Google will only get smarter. So, if things like beautiful, well-composed images don't matter yet, then they will soon. And if Google is only so-so at checking grammar at the moment, it will get better. Read the Associated Press guidelines. Learn how to write using the inverted pyramid style. And seeing as Google Assistant will occasionally bring up a website to show the user on their phone, make sure that your site is well suited to being quickly loaded on a mobile device. You should definitely look into using AMP formatting for your websites if you want to get more traffic to the mobile version of your site. As mentioned, this can be done easily through a single plugin. At the very least, make sure your site is speed optimized and make sure that it is mobile responsive and has an easy UI for a touch input. Avoid hover over menus and the like. You should also make sure that you're using Google's markup language for rich snippets. I'll lead you to research the specifics of how this works, but it basically means you're adding some additional HTML code to your site to tell spiders and robots what certain features of your content are. For example, if you are going to provide a recipe with ingredients, then you can use the markup language in order to highlight those ingredients. This is what allows Google to highlight this kind of information, along with review scores and the times of concerts and events. You'll see all this highlighted right on the SERPs, Search Engine Results pages, any time that you do a search. And of course, this is very important for Google's Assistant's ability to answer you in natural English when you say, what time is a concert tomorrow? Content Marketing SEO is only one tool you can use to promote yourself, however. The other is content marketing. And the two actually go hand in hand perfectly. So, content marketing means that you're adding content to your website to bring more traffic. But this time, the aim is to bring repeat traffic from visitors. You are more interested in engagement and loyalty than short-term spikes in numbers. Think about the reasons that you go back to any website. The answer is because it provides consistently high-quality information for you on a regular basis. And therefore, you want to go back and see what will be the latest information. And if you trust and respect the author, then you will go there whenever you have a question on a particular topic. It's great when you find someone you trust or a site that you find entertaining. In other words, then, it is the content that is bringing you back to the site. And that means that it must be well-written and unique. Content marketing works like so. You discover a post through social media or Google. Read it and leave. You discover another post another time in the same way. You notice the brand and you think, hmm, I quite like this site. It comes up again. You then decide to check it out the next time you have a related question. You then bookmark it and decide to check back regularly. You are now a fan. So, 
Content marketing means writing consistently high quality and engaging content and then sharing it. It means using this process in order to build trust, authority, and relationships with your audience. And this is precisely what you also now need to do for effective SEO. So, it is all starting to come together. How to write great content. This is where so many people will go wrong though, as they simply don't know what it is that makes great content. So many people will decide to get into internet marketing by looking at which niches are most popular or most profitable. Maybe they pick fitness, or they pick dating, or they pick make money online. Never mind that they have no knowledge or interest in that topic. Then they set about either writing or commissioning the most generic posts they can possibly think of on these topics. How to get six-pack abs. 10 best push-up exercises. How to get a big chest. Or 10 SEO mistakes you're making. How to get more visitors. They then share this content to social media and then they wonder why people don't come flocking in. The simple fact of the matter, these articles are dull. People are in a hurry. You are not offering any value. These posts are a dime a dozen. We've seen hundreds of them before in our travels. Would you stop to read a title like that? And this is why I'm going to say something unpleasant to hear. If you don't have a genuine interest in the niche you're in, then there is no point being in that niche. Because in order to offer any value, you need to say new and exciting things. And to do that, you need to understand the topic completely. Instead of saying how to get six-pack abs then, you might say how cardio acceleration can help you to burn 900% more fat. That's actually a real thing and a real statistic, by the way. It's 100 times more interesting than how to get abs. But if you're writing a post yourself and you're not interested or qualified when it comes to fitness, you won't have the inside knowledge or foresight to write articles like this. And if you hire a writer to write the topic, they'll just find a generic post online and rewrite the post. They aren't experts. And they don't truly care about your brand. They're just trying to get paid. Here are some more pointers to help you write better content. Storytelling is SEO for the human brain. We are naturally inclined to enjoy stories. We like stories because we have been listening to stories around campfires since the very beginning of our evolution. We've evolved listening to them. We also like stories because we can imagine ourselves in the shoes of the person in that story, and that gets us emotionally invested. If you're about to write a dull post, think about how you could restructure it to tell it like a story. We want information quickly. If your page is a dense block of text, then you are going to immediately drive away and lose your visitors. It's highly important that you avoid this by spacing your content out with lots of paragraphs and spacing it with big bold headings. Your headings should technically tell the whole story. Big fonts are equally important here, especially on mobile. If your posts are just walls of text, then people will leave as soon as they land on your page. And this will be devastating because Google is now able to monitor bounce rates and identify when a visitor lands in your site and then very quickly leaves. Images. The images you use to decorate your content are incredibly important, and they can make a huge difference to your bounce rates, to your audience's enjoyment of your content, and much more. An image will immediately communicate the topic of your post, and if it is taken well, then it will help to increase the apparent production value of your site, too. A big, beautiful image can convey an emotion and get people really excited to read your content. Plus, you can actually optimize your images for Google Images by using the right dimensions, 16 by 9, the right tags, and the right file names. It's possible to get some pretty great images for free from stock image websites, but you know what? By far the best strategy of all is to take the photos yourself. This way, you can not only create the most stunning and beautiful images, but also ensure that they perfectly fit the topic of your post and back up your points. Instead of being generic and somewhat relevant, the image can become the perfect partner for whatever your post is about. This means investing in a great camera, and it means learning the basics of composition, framing, using manual settings in your camera, etc. But it's definitely worth it. If nothing else, it is worth it because you'll be able to sell this service as an additional arrow in your quiver, and as part of a comprehensive web marketing service. Content development should mean multimedia content development. Use the right headings. Another tip is to make sure that you always use the right headings. That means that you should make sure your articles are sound and as interesting and exciting as possible. It's interesting to look at clickbait as a source of inspiration here. Clickbait titles are the ones you see on social media sites that use cheap strategies to get you to click. These will use fake anticipation and mystery, for instance, to get you interested. 
What happens next will blow your mind. Five weird tricks to lose belly fat. Number three will blow your mind. The omitted key piece of information sparks curiosity in the viewer, and they click the link. The unfortunate reality is that nine times out of ten, clickbait offers nothing of value. It is just poor quality content, spam, or even a bunch of ads. Hence the terrible reputation that this approach now has. But you can learn from it. Put the emotional hook of your content right in the title. Keep the USP front and center. And then just make sure you actually deliver on that promise when your readers click through and find your content. The Power of Video for Massive Influence and Engagement My aim is to teach you to become an internet marketer so that you can promote your own website or so that you can promote someone else's so you can run a business or so that you can create an SEO service. But I don't just want you to be an internet marketer. I want you to be a cut above the rest. And that means getting real. What do I mean by this? I mean that you need to stop doing all the bits that are easy to do at home on a computer and to instead start getting involved in real business. This means that you need to go to those networking events I mentioned earlier. It likewise means you need to make videos, get in front of the camera, learn to edit, invest in some good quality background music. Yes, it can be stressful, and it's something that might not come naturally to you. But if you can create high quality video as well as high quality content and SEO, then you will be leagues above most of the internet marketing gurus out there. Video can make all the difference to your marketing campaign. Firstly, that's because it is something that a lot of people can't easily do. If you have a good camera, if you know how to edit, if you can present yourself well on camera, then you immediately set yourself apart as a professional. Now you are someone to be listened to and trusted. On the other hand, if you are just running a website and filling it with articles and stock images, from the perspective of your audience, you could very well be a kid in your mom's basement. There's nothing wrong with that per se, but if you're trying to establish trust and authority, then a video will go a long way. Likewise, a great video is also a perfect tool for increasing the amount of engagement with your audience and building a stronger relationship. Trust me on this one. If you have a YouTube channel that is moderately successful, you'll build a much more loyal and engaged following than you would through a website alone. For many creators, this is the big change they need and can make a huge impact to their growth. That's because talking on film means they get to know you. The more likely to watch all the way through because video is naturally more engaging and you can convey more emotion with music, clips, animation, and more. So don't be afraid of this step. It could be the crucial difference that defines your success going forward. Invest in a good camera and step in front of it. And as an aside, if you're selling a product on a landing page or promoting a business through a homepage, then adding an explainer video or persuasive sales video can make a massive difference. So many companies struggle with the single most basic and important job of any homepage, explaining precisely what it is that business does. I really have a pet peeve of landing on a business site and being told that it uses cloud-based solutions to provide synergistic process fixes through VAS and POS software systems. Showing off with clever words does not make sales. But having a video that plays automatically and explains clearly and concisely what the business does will. Social Media Marketing Done Correctly Social media marketing is one of the hardest aspects of internet marketing for a new business to understand. But it's also the one that makes the biggest difference in many cases once it finally clicks. The aim of social media marketing is not only to get your articles seen by lots of people, but also to create a community around your brand. It is to talk directly to your audience and to get them to trust and like you. You need to make them think of you as a friend or as a trusted company that they can get behind and rely on. Your aim is to use social media as it is designed to be used as a communication tool. The problem is that so many internet marketers and small businesses see it instead as nothing but a podium for their marketing. They post things like, try our new product today, and find out why we're the best in the business, and wonder why engagement is low. Would you bother to follow a Twitter account if that was all it ever posted? Instead, you need to provide the audience with value which means providing them with more of what they came to get from your website. You do this by sharing links and posts, but also by sharing images and tips. You need to demonstrate quickly to your audience that you are providing this value through your social media, and the best way I know to do this 
is to include a widget on your website showing a feed from your Twitter and Instagram accounts. That way, as soon as someone lands on your website, they will see the post you've made and they'll have easy access to a button so that they can instantly start to follow you. Selling the dream. Sharing tips, advice, and entertainment in these ways will often work. That is a very good way to bring more people to your site. But what can also work very well is to sell the dream. Because one of the most important things to recognize about marketing and about sales is that people don't buy based on logic. People buy based on emotion. People buy things that they want, and they buy things that they think are desirable, that they think other people want. People buy in a rush because they have a feeling that if they don't act quickly, they will lose the opportunity. This is something that a good persuasive writer can use well. And people often follow a brand or an individual on social media for similar reasons. For escapism, for vicarious living, to chase a feeling that they enjoy. This is why women on Instagram become rich and famous posting images of themselves wearing nice clothes and going out partying. People can follow those creators on social media and feel as though they're partaking in that lifestyle. They can enjoy the way it makes them feel. And they can be inspired. Of course, this makes that person very good at selling clothes too. Likewise though, if you have a fitness brand, then you will likely want to promote that brand using social media by showing images that gel with the message you want to convey. You won't post images of you lying in front of the TV with a six pack of beer resting on your gut. You'll post images of you running on the beach as the sun rises or hitting the weights hard at 6 a.m. If you have a blog about earning money online, you'll post images of yourself in a suit, sitting at a computer or looking at code. You'll sell the dream and the value proposition. The value proposition is the emotional hook. This is the why that drives your business. Why do people follow you? How do they want you to make their lives better? And how can you communicate this better? Social media for communication. And like I said, social media is also a tool for communication. This is how you get people involved with your brand. It's how you get people interested in what you have to offer and make them feel you're listening. Like, if you have a problem with whatever they have bought, they can get in touch with you and you'll answer. That means you need to be interactive. So post regularly to your social media channels and ask questions. Run competitions and best of all, try out Facebook Live. Being able to talk directly to your followers is an immensely powerful thing and can massively increase engagement and trust. What's more is that right now Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube are all trying to promote their live features. So if you go live right now, your audience will be notified and lots of people will likely get involved. Now, you can ask them what kind of content they'd like to see from you. What kind of products? You can ask questions. You can share your genuine gratitude for their support. Another immensely powerful strategy is to find other online communities to take part in. Good examples include forums, of course, but also subreddits and more. These are very powerful places to find new people to market your content to. But if you jump into one of them and post a link to your site, chances are the link will be removed and you may be banned. Best case scenario? you'll receive a lot of negative flack. But on the other hand, if you spend time in that community and answer questions, chat to people, build trust and get to know everyone, then if you mention you have a website, this is an entirely different story. Now you have a legion of people that trust you, some of whom might even consider you friends, and they will be there to support your brand every step of the way and to help you promote it on social media and elsewhere. Note, these social communities are also examples of routes to markets. These are places on the web where the people who make up your target audience congregate. Any platform you can find that lets you communicate directly with the correct audience is a route to market. Other examples include things like industry magazines or clubs. Look for routes to market, as these always offer great marketing opportunities. Finally, make sure that you are always answering any direct messages, comments on YouTube, comments in your posts on Facebook, etc. All this builds more trust, more loyalty, and more interest for your brand. Read the book 1,000 True Fans and you'll see why these relationships are worth cultivating. Branding and Building a Brilliant Website Absolutely central to all of this is branding. In today's environment, having a brand for your website or business is the most valuable thing you can do to ensure engagement and to build success. And it ties in with just about everything we've said so far up to this point. Your brand is what should tie your entire message together and what should help to perfectly target your ideal audience. It's what will elevate your site above being just another spammy site designed to get ads and turn it into something that people and Google love. 
Google came out several years ago now and said that it would support brands more in the future. A lot of people reacted badly to this news, seeing it as an attack on the little guy. The assumption was that Google would now be a big fan of sites like Coca-Cola and not care about smaller, unknown creators. That's not the point at all. Small brands are fine. Personal brands are fine. Brands that use your name. What's not fine is calling your website something like ways to gain abs.com. That's not a brand. That's a keyword. That's you making it abundantly clear to Google and your prospective visitors that you don't care about the quality of your work. You don't have professional pride. You have a tool for making money. A brand goes in hand with professional pride because it shows that you are keen to create something that people will remember and that you want to be associated with the work you do. If you build a brand, then you have a message and you have accountability. Think about it. All of the top websites that you visit currently have a strong brand. They likely have a great logo, their own style, a strong design language throughout their website. They know what they are and they know who they're for. And this comes across in the quality of their layout, in the cohesion across their social media, all with the same username, the same logo, and the same ethos. And in the little touches like their video's background music and their bottom thirds. This is what makes something memorable and professional. And this is what you need to do as well. How do you create a brand? Creating a brand doesn't mean creating a logo. A logo is just one aspect of a brand, and it's not what comes first. What comes first is a mission statement. A mission statement is a phrase belonging to a business that says what it's all about. This should explain what, how, and why. What do you make, sell, or do? How do you do it differently? Why do you do it? I highly recommend watching Simon Sinek's excellent TED Talk on the Golden Circle at this point. It's called How Great Leaders Inspire Action. Most companies will think about the what. We make hats. We design websites. We provide legal advice. Many will think about the how. We use the best materials. We outsource to China. We resell, but with a value add. But the why is what matters most. This is the motivation that spurred you on to get involved in the business in the first place. It is what makes you get out of bed in the morning. And it's once again why you cannot have a successful website or business in a niche or industry that you don't truly care about. So, if you have a restaurant, maybe your why is because you want to introduce the world to healthier, cleaner, and more responsibly sourced food. If you have a website about fitness, maybe your why is because you want to inspire the feeling of accomplishment in your audience. Whatever the case, you need to understand this because it is what will give you your value proposition. It is what will give you your design language. And it is what will create your marketing opportunities for you. This will also allow you to find your buyer persona. This is your ideal customer. And through a combination of surveying and of thinking about your brand, you will be able to draw them up. Now, you need to ensure that your strategy is aimed at this person. It is a huge mistake to make a website that you want to be for everyone. If you do that, then it won't be particularly interesting or inspiring to anyone. The key to remember is to make people into real fans. Remember, content marketing and new SEO are about the quality of your followers, not the quantity. You want engagement. Ask yourself, is yours the kind of brand that someone can be a fan of? People just don't know about Apple. They are fans of Apple. People are fans of Tim Ferriss. They like what these brands stand for. They feel they know them. They want to associate with them. To get to that point where your site is inspiring to people, you need to stand for something other than getting clicks on your AdSense, web, and logo design. With all that decided, you can now go about designing your logo and your website. The logo should be simple. It should be minimal, and it should be versatile. This logo will be used across all your social media, on your website, etc. You need to avoid being cliche while at the same time making it clear what your site is about and who it is for. In an ideal world, the combination of your logo and company name should be enough on their own in order to let the right people know that your brand is for them. If you're struggling for ideas, try making a mood board. This is a collage made up of images, logos, site designs, and more that you like the looks of. Looking at these can help a lot to give you a kind of direction for your brand. If you put them all together on the page, you can then start to get ideas for unique ways of combining them, and that will give you ideas for your own design. Actually, build the logo using Adobe Illustrator. This creates vector files, which are files that can be resized to any degree without losing any of their quality, and which can be edited as well. JPEGs, PNGs, and GIFs are not portable or flexible enough for your uses. 
So that is another thing I want you to learn. I want you to learn to use Illustrator and to make good designs. Like videography and photography, this is a skill that will elevate you above spammer and into content developer. That's when you start to become highly in demand. WordPress. Finally, the website itself should be built using WordPress. This is a free tool used by over a quarter of the websites on the net, including many of the biggest brands. It is highly customizable. There is massive community support and it is completely free. You can install new plugins with a single click to add more functionality. And you can install new themes in just the same way too. And by doing all these things, you'll be able to make sure your site meets all of the requirements we've learned about over the course of this training. That means being able to implement AMP, Accelerated Mobile Pages, with a single plugin, for instance. Being able to install a theme and know your site will have a responsive, mobile-friendly layout or being able to apply ad semantic markups. Using WordPress means using a tried and tested tool that has helped countless others to become highly successful. There's no good reason to introduce more elements of confusion into the mix. Or to make life harder for yourself by using a tool with less support that requires you to implement these features yourself. Your strategy. We've covered an awful lot here, but we still haven't covered everything. Not by a long shot. We haven't even touched on email marketing, for instance. Nor have we discussed how to go about conquering YouTube. We haven't really dived into good grammar, etc. for your blog posts. But this is about the bigger picture. This is about strategy. I hope you've learned enough to now understand how internet marketing works and what you need to do. It's about having a solid brand, one that people can get behind and feel excited for. It's about having a great logo, a modern web design and content that is unique and exciting. If you can do all of that, then you can create a brand that will inspire and create true fans and that Google will like too. It's about expanding your own skills to create wonderful multimedia content and branding. It's about being able to make videos, to understand the psychology of persuasive writing, to sell the dream through your social media. Develop your skills. Don't be afraid to step in front of the camera or to network in person to find those opportunities for collaboration. Be a real professional who is proud of your work. And the rest is just implementing a regular steady stream of high quality content with subtle use of keywords and LSI. It is a matter of getting guest posts on the highest quality websites. It's a matter of sharing your content on social media. That is how you create a cohesive internet marketing strategy. Three powerful platforms for selling your products. When it comes to making money online, selling a digital product is one of the most straightforward methods, as well as one of the most rewarding and the most profitable. This means selling a product with zero overheads, where the entire transaction can be automated by a tool such as WooCommerce. What's not to like? But why not take things a step further? By adding your products to JVZoo, Warrior Plus, and ClickBank, you can potentially skyrocket your sales. In this presentation, we'll look at how this works. So first, what are these sites? While JVZoo, Warrior Plus, and ClickBank are all separate entities, they have one thing in common. They are affiliate platforms. What this means is that they list products that can be sold for commission. If you were an affiliate marketer, then you might visit these sites in order to find ebooks, courses, and other products that you could sell for commission. You can make a lot of money this way. But have you ever thought about being on the other side of the equation? What if you were the person with the product? Firstly, you can use all three of these sites to sell directly. This is a captive audience of people who are highly interested in internet marketing. So if you have a product that caters to that audience, then you can potentially make some big sales here. But that's not all. These sites are also useful if you want to get help selling. If you list your product and open it up to affiliate marketers, then you'll be able to enlist a legion of professional marketers to help you sell your book. So, for instance, if you are already selling your ebook from your website for $25 per download, you can continue doing this. You have lost nothing. But now let's say that you offer to give away 50% of your earnings for every sale. That way, you're still earning $12.50 per sale. If an affiliate marketer with a mailing list of 100,000 highly targeted people should jump on board, then that could potentially mean hundreds of sales overnight without you lifting a finger. Sure, you're giving away some profit, but you just made hundreds or thousands of dollars you wouldn't have made otherwise. But now imagine what happens when you have 200 marketers all doing the same thing.
5 Amazingly Powerful Tools for Internet Marketers There are plenty of reports out there discussing the best tools for internet marketers. The problem with those? They tend to focus on free tools that only offer a little bit of functionality. That's not what this presentation is about. This time, we're talking about 5 tools used by the biggest online brands in the world. 5 tools that will take your business to the next level. Disclaimer, these tools are not cheap, but that's the point. If you want to be successful, then you need to invest in this career path by picking the serious tools that get serious results. KeywordTool.io KeywordTool.io is one of many keyword research tools. It offers perhaps the best balance of performance and price and will help you to do much better keyword research. The result is that you'll find terms that you can actually stand a chance of ranking for, thereby helping you to bring in even more cash. Adobe Creative Cloud Adobe Creative Cloud is a suite of apps from Adobe. These include the likes of Illustrator, Premiere Pro, and Photoshop. Simply put, unless you are a Mac user, there is no excuse for not paying for this bundle. Why? Because internet marketing is a must, and this is the best way to create video. Because AI files are the industry standard for logos and other design elements. Because Photoshop can take your imagery to the next level. The list goes on, but you get the point. Trackonomics Trackonomics is a tool that lets you find and compare affiliate programs to monetize your website. Why settle for selling a cheap ebook when you can sell an MBA course? Envato Elements Envato Elements is a service that gives you access to a huge number of stock images, videos, website templates, sound effects, fonts, and more. It will immediately improve the quality and professional impact of your website, so don't settle for anything less. WooCommerce WooCommerce is an online shop that is a plugin for WordPress. It also offers one of the best ways to monetize your website. That's because selling a digital product from your website is far preferable to placing ads on the site or selling an affiliate product. And with WooCommerce, you'll be able to build effective online stores using plugins that provide a huge range of additional features. Want to promote your products in your site sidebar? Easy! 5 Essential Skills You Should Develop As An Internet Marketer A lot of your success as an internet marketer will come down to your own specific skill set. Do you have the necessary know-how and skills to stand out from the crowd and to take your business to the next level? The problem is that a lot of internet marketers are happy to rest on their laurels. They know how to write blog posts and they can use social media. That's enough, right? Wrong! If you want a competitive edge, then the more skills you learn, the more successful you will be. In this presentation, we'll be going over some extremely effective skills that will help you progress. Copywriting Writing is one thing. Knowing how to write correctly is another. You should know how to follow AP guidelines for your articles and posts. And you should understand how to write persuasive sales copy for those sales pages. Vector Art this is an example of a skill that can help you get ahead of the pack. Vector Art allows you to create logos, icons, and other images that can be scaled to any size with no loss of quality or resolution. This is crucial, as it is what is used as the industry standard. If you want to design your own elements and you want them to look professional, you need to learn tools like Adobe Illustrator. While you're at it, you can also gain a lot from learning to create 3D models in a piece of software such as Blender. And you can gain more again from using something like Photoshop. This way, you can create amazing images to go with your posts and to adorn your site. Videography, Video Editing Adding a video marketing component to your business will help you progress incredibly quickly and incredibly well. Videography and video editing will allow you to create high-quality videos so that you can vlog on YouTube or so that you can create videos that will help you to market your products. Development Becoming a developer is another extremely worthwhile endeavor. As a developer, you will have the necessary skills to be able to create your own website and to add interactive functionality and to even build apps that further promote your efforts. SEO Of course, understanding and being able to execute an SEO campaign is another extremely beneficial skill that will help your content get seen by more people. 
Don't just learn the basics, master this subject and you'll be unstoppable. 5 Secrets of Successful Affiliate Marketers Being successful as an affiliate marketer can lead you to making a huge amount of money from the comfort of your home. It means that you'll be selling products that other people created, which in turn means there is no time investment for you to spend developing a product and there is no risk. But if affiliate marketing were that easy, everyone would be doing it. Affiliate marketing can in fact be easy or hard, depending on how you approach it. So here are the secrets of those most successful affiliate marketers. You know the ones. The ones that stand in front of their private jets and sell you their ebooks for thousands of dollars. 1. Pick the right products. The first and most important tip is to ensure that you pick the right products. A good product is one that is well made and offers good value, but also one that has a great value proposition. That is to say that it speaks to an emotional hook of some sort. How does this product make people's lives genuinely better? Will this product get people excited? Does it trigger an emotional response? 2. Build your own audience. Building your audience is the other crucial step. Your job is to connect the right audience with the right products. And so your success will hinge on your ability to get people to listen to you. 3. Use a diverse range of products. There is no requirement to focus on just a single product. Look for a variety of products and you will build a business that is more resilient and that can cater to all kinds of customers. 4. Use powerful tools. As you gain more profit that you can invest back into your business, you should consider using more advanced marketing tools. An example of this is Trackonomics. This is a tool that will let you search for products from a massive variety of sellers and to compare the best deals for affiliates. 5. Work hard. Finally, work hard. Don't believe the claim that internet marketing and affiliate marketing are ways to get rich easily. You need to put the time in by building your audience and creating trust and engagement. Only then will you be able to make massive sales and help those product creators to reach the kind of success they can only dream of. 5 Ways You Can Make Money Online Looking to make money from a website? Want to earn cash from the comfort of your home as an internet marketer? In this presentation, we're going to go over 5 powerful ways that you can start generating cash from the comfort of your home. 1. Sell an ebook. If you have a website that has an audience, or even if you have just a big following on Instagram, you should consider selling an ebook. Selling an ebook means you can generate profit without any overheads, barely any administration, and no storage or fulfillment. People pay for your ebook, then they download it. It's that simple. If you're in the US, then you won't even be charged for VAT. 2. Create an e commerce store. While ebooks are fantastic for generating cash quickly and easily, they do require an established audience. That's because not everyone reads ebooks. People won't read ebooks if they aren't tech savvy, for instance, or if they don't like reading. That's why physical products still sell more than digital products. It takes a little time investing in physical products, but sites like Alibaba make it easier than ever. 3. Provide services. If you are an internet marketer who makes money from a website, then that means that you can also help other people to make money from their websites. And if you target massive brands, then you can earn a huge amount of money by doing this. You just need the confidence and you need to turn those marketing skills in on yourself. Now you are the product. 4. Sell Affiliate Products Selling affiliate products is an alternative to selling an ebook or similar. This essentially means that you will be selling products you did not make in order to make commission. The great thing about this method is that it will allow you to scale your business endlessly, and there is absolutely zero barrier to entry. 5. SaaS SaaS is Software as a Service. This is a more ambitious method for making money online but it's also one that has the highest chance of helping you to become a hugely successful startup working at a Silicon Valley. The aim here is to create some kind of web app that allows a useful service for individuals or businesses. All you need is a good idea. You can even hire someone else to do the programming. How to become a thought leader. Want to become a highly successful internet marketer? Then you also need to become a thought leader. 
A thought leader is someone who leads the discourse when it comes to a certain topic or niche. That means they will be able to influence buying decisions, as well as to start trends. Influencers are in demand for advertisers because they can greatly help them to gain exposure for their products, not to mention driving more sales. Imagine what you could do for your own brand or digital products as an influencer. So how do you become an influencer? The key is to understand that an influencer needs to have something unique and interesting to say. And this is where a lot of internet marketers go wrong. It's why a lot of internet marketers are not also influencers. The big mistake is to create a boring website that has no real message. An example might be a fitness website that just shares generic fitness tips. This doesn't have an emotional hook or anything to help it stand out from the crowd. Why would someone who knows a lot about fitness bother clicking on an article titled How to Get Great Abs? It's boring. Instead, a thought leader is someone who can bring unique insight to a topic based on their own passion, experience, and knowledge surrounding the topic. To make this happen, you first need to ensure that the topic you have picked is one that you genuinely know about and are interested in. If not, then it will come across that you are a noob. Chances are some of your content will be factually inaccurate or at best derivative. This is why hiring writers won't work. At the same time, you also need a brand and a message that is different from the competition. Again, a general fitness brand is not that. What is that is a fitness brand that takes inspiration from 80s action movies. Or how about a fitness brand that is all about training outdoors? These are more specific and niche concepts, but they are also unique. Moreover, the people who find them appealing will now only have one place to get that kind of content, and the rest of the fitness industry will certainly sit up and take notice. That is how you become a thought leader. That and lots of consistent posting with great marketing and a knack for telling stories. How to get started with email marketing. Email marketing is, for one reason or another, one of the least popular forms of marketing among marketers. Perhaps it's too boring. Perhaps it takes too long to see results. Or perhaps it's unrelatable. But the truth is that email marketing is one of the most important aspects of any campaign. Not only does this give you a direct route to your followers and fans, but it also allows you to do so in a manner that doesn't rely on a third party, like Facebook or Google. So how do you get started? Follow the steps in this presentation and you'll be well on your way. Step 1. First, you'll need something called an autoresponder. This is a tool that will help you to collect, manage, and use email addresses. You can't run a successful email marketing campaign without this, seeing as you'll need to handle things like double opt-ins and people unsubscribing. Step 2. Next, create your sign-up form. Collect as much information as possible without overstepping the mark. Place this at the bottom of each of your blog posts and in the sidebar. Make sure to talk about it and explain why people should sign up. Step 3. You might also consider creating a squeeze page. This is a single page on your site dedicated to getting people to sign up for your mailing list. Use your best persuasive writing and a focused design. You might also consider making an incentive or a lead magnet to go here. This is something like a free ebook that they will receive in exchange for signing up. Step 4. Next, you need to start sending those emails. Write emails that provide value and use subject lines that stand out and grab attention. Step 5. Be consistent with your posting and aim to send a message about once every week to begin with. You can ramp this up if you have a product launch or similar. Step 6. Make sure that you actively maintain your list to keep list hygiene high. That means that you should remove people who never open your emails and certainly remove addresses that bounce. Your aim is to make sure that your IP does not get blacklisted. Follow these steps and you'll have a highly engaged audience you can promote products to. This is especially powerful for affiliate marketing. How to get traffic to your website from social media platforms. Social media is one of the most powerful tools for internet marketers. That's because it will not only allow you to reach a large audience, but will also allow you to develop a rapport with that audience. This is a crucial distinction and one that all too many internet marketers miss. Social media is not just another advertising platform. Rather, it is a place to form allies and to create engagement such that your followers become lifetime fans. 
This is, of course, hugely more effective when it comes to making sales and also leads to far more resilient business that isn't 100% reliant on its SEO. So let's discuss how you go about getting to that point. First, let's re-emphasize the fact that your social media account is not just a platform for you to use for further advertising. If you post ads on your social media or do nothing but talk about how good your products and services are, then you will lose followers and subscribers. People don't want their home feed full of meaningless posts about your cloud services. That means you need to provide real value. You can do this by creating posts that are informative or inspiring. Instagram is particularly effective for the latter and lets you use images that really sell your value proposition and to combine these with text that will offer further insight and advice. On Facebook, one of the very most effective ways to provide value is simply to share your blog posts. If you have written a useful and interesting blog post, then this can provide people with useful information and also encourage shares. With the basics down, the next step is to consider the more active and advanced strategies. One important tip is to communicate with your audience. Remember that social media networks are primarily a communication tool. This is how they are designed to be used. And if you can engage in a conversation with your audience, then they will feel as though they know you. That in turn can be transformative and ultimately result in their becoming far more loyal fans. Finally, consider integrating your social media with your site itself. That can mean adding widgets and plugins. Make it easy for your visitors to share the content they enjoy to their social networks at a click of a button. And make sure they can see your feed as soon as they land on your page. Top 5 Mistakes That New Internet Marketers Make In this discussion, we'll be going over 5 mistakes that new internet marketers make. These can prevent your blog or business from being successful before it's even got started. So grab a pen and paper and listen up. Number 1. Being Spammy Let's face it, an awful lot of people who get into internet marketing do so because they want to make money quickly with minimum work. They see that you can make money online, and they assume that this must be an easy and quick way to make a buck. Thus, the type of content they create is spammy and adds no real value. But look at all the biggest brands online and you'll notice something they all have in common. They're good. Number 2. Poor Design Similarly, your web design should be top-notch. That means having a strong brand, it means having a responsive and modern website, and it means using the best tools to build everything. Again, look at your competition. Does your site honestly compete? Number 3. Not creating enough volume Again, to reiterate, becoming an internet marketer is not a get-rich-quick scheme. If you approach it with that mindset, then you are in for a nasty shock. To succeed at internet marketing to the point that it becomes your day job, you initially need to treat it like your day job. That means you will be working 8-hour days writing new blog posts, gaining links, and communicating with your fans. This is non-negotiable. Number 4. Not being social The social aspect is hugely important for internet marketers. If you can build a genuine relationship with the people who build your website, and if you can appear to be a real person that others want to know and aspire to be like, then you will find that your site grows much faster and everything is much more successful as a result. Number 5. Not waiting long enough Finally, the last big mistake that bloggers make is not waiting long enough. This is something even big brands are guilty of when starting new ventures. If you want your website to be a huge hit, then you need to wait. It takes time to gain momentum and traction on Google, with your audience, and elsewhere. If your site hasn't become a massive success in two years, then keep going. It will all be worth it. Top 5 Myths Surrounding Internet Marketing Internet marketing is an extremely exciting business opportunity that allows anyone to earn a living from the comfort of their home. What's more is that they can earn a passive income, meaning that they can generate cash without needing to actively exchange their time for money. But while internet marketing is extremely exciting, it's also still relatively new. It's been around for decades, sure, but compared to jobs like Bricklayer, it's certainly not quite as historic. With that in mind, there is a lot of misunderstanding surrounding the topic. Listen up, and we'll take a look at some of the most common myths and the truth behind them. Internet marketing is a get-rich-quick scheme. If you're getting into internet marketing because you think you're going to get rich quick, then think again. 
Internet marketing is in fact one of the less guaranteed methods for earning money, and it's also one of the slowest. You'll spend months or even years working on your site before you see the money rolling in. Internet marketers don't do any work. Likewise, don't believe the sales pitches that you can earn a living by pressing a few buttons. Eventually, internet marketing will generate passive income, meaning that you're earning money while you sleep. Until then, though, you'll need to put in a lot of hours in order to set up that business initially. Internet marketing requires tech savvy. Learning to program or use advanced tools can give you an advantage as an internet marketer. That said, though, there is certainly no requirement to learn these. To be successful as a marketer, the only truly essential skills are an ability to write basic English and the commitment to get the job done. Internet marketing is risky. You don't need to pack in your day job in order to become an internet marketer. There is nothing to stop you from running your internet marketing business on the side. So give it a try and see what happens. What have you to lose? Internet marketing is spammy. Yes, internet marketing can be spammy when done wrong. But the truly successful marketers are the ones that are above cheap methods and that instead focus on providing real value for their readers and visitors. Those are also the ones that go on to be hired by top brands and firms. So pay attention.